They started out calling it the swine flu. This new strain of influenza, now known as H1N1, has caused problems from daycares to colleges. It's been deadly in some cases, mild in others. Doug Johnson looks at fighting the flu for your child's health. Today turned out to be a nice break for Abby Wilson. She's getting to skip school and go with her mom to visit her grandmother at work. Wednesday's a breeze compared to the weekend when she told her mom she didn't feel good at all. I told her when I woke up from my dad's house, I got very hot and I got a fever. Monday was rough. She had a fever all day, off and on. Um, yesterday was a lot better, no fever. Just now her sinuses are messed up. And that's about it. During that time, Abby's big brother, Tyler, was a little worried about getting the virus. That led to a face mask for Abby to avoid spreading the illness. Getting a hug is always better than getting sick. Abby's mom, Mandy Wilson, gave her seven-year-old daughter Advil to help control her temperature until she could get her to a doctor on Monday. They gave her some medicine called Tamiflu, and it doesn't cure it, it just helps with the symptoms of it. According to the director of the Memphis Shelby County Health Department, H1N1 has been causing problems for months. Similar to the seasonal flu, its arrival was unexpected, and until the beginning of October, there was no vaccine. Early in August, children are recongregating in classrooms, and I think that helped to fuel some things. And so we were seeing uh, a, a large number of cases of H1N1. If a child hasn't had the vaccine and gets the H1N1 flu, many doctors believe the best course of action is to let the illness run its course. That means keeping school-aged children at home for at least 24 hours after their fever breaks. That's particularly if they have no other health problems. Underlying medical conditions have been a serious factor when the disease has turned deadly. That's why it's important to be aware of the risk, even when children like Nicholas Lewis are healthy. His mom, Antonise, is bringing him in for a well care visit. But since kids under five are at highest risk, it's something the doctor makes sure she mentions. Even when families take precautions, it's not always possible to avoid H1N1. Dr. Ann Payne Johnson found out firsthand how it can affect an entire family. My husband and I were both sick for two weeks. My five-year-old had a runny nose for three days and it was over with. My two-year-old um, had about seven days of runny nose, cough, cold. She had a temperature for about three days and then it was done. And so it really varies from patient to patient. Dr. Payne Johnson says it's important that parents continue to push cleanliness as a way to avoid problems. Make sure that the kids wash their hands when they go into group settings, before recess, when they go into the lunch room. They need to wash their hands. The chief medical officer for Shelby County believes the H1N1 vaccine should be something most kids get, along with a vaccine for the seasonal flu. Both should help families get the illness under some level of control. The H1N1 vaccine does not protect against the seasonal flu. The seasonal vaccine does not protect against H1N1 influenza. So uh, for some children, they will actually need to have two shots, uh, an initial shot and a booster shot for the seasonal flu and an initial shot and a booster shot uh, for the H1N1. Abby's ready to return to school. Meanwhile, other parents may still have to deal with the widespread outbreak of H1N1. If your kids do get sick, give them acetaminophen or ibuprofen, plenty of fluids, and keep them at home. If they have a fever more than three days or other medical problems, call the doctor. For Smart Medicine, I'm Doug Johnson.